Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com and we're here today to look at the latest release from Neil Young. Big change. Now, those of you that have been following his career know that Neil Young's madly obsessive about audio quality. God bless. He was always frustrated about what he felt were the brick wall limitations of 1644-1 CDs. He started the Pono company in order to um, derive high resolution audio spent a fortune on really extraordinary digital audio converters, um, uh, put out Archives Volume 1, which was on Blu-ray, that actually had um, BD Audio Live that actually allowed you to download new content. Then, of course, the servers went away. Now he's got his Neil Young Archives, which actually allows you to stream in a variety of uh, switchable uh, audio formats from essentially MP3 quality all the way up to high res. Uh, I challenge many of you to actually hear the difference on those. Uh, it's subtle, but it's 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 there, but it's subtle. Um, nonetheless, he's also been somebody, uh, especially for his older records, to really care about maintaining the analog chain. It's one thing for if a record's been digitally mixed and produced, um, a going to record, but so many of these records were not necessarily meant in the sort of ontological sense, but but were designed from the mixing stage right from the initial uh, point in order to be pressed on ideally as good vinyl as possible. And he's done an amazing job with his archive series of producing phenomenal sounding records. They really are truly beautiful sounding and sound like what the sort of original intent of those records was meant to be. Not to say that um, some of his digital releases aren't remarkable. I love the quad mix, essentially the 5.1 mix, the DVD audio mix of Harvest that he did, um, uh, sort of uh, uh, allowing me uh, in a modern setup to actually hear the original surround uh, design of, of that record. But for some of his older stuff, we can get away with some really decent uh, analog reproduction on vinyl and be happy with it. Now his live shows in particular shine really wonderfully and getting all the nuance and sort of the grit and all the uh, ambiance of so many of his shows. Uh, live in Massey Hall being one of his more definitive um, uh, uh, presentations. Just a beautiful record. Um, right from that era of, of, of him starting the solo, sort of pre-harvest. Um, the, the live at Massey Hall uh, Blu-ray of is, is, is technically a Stratford show. Um, the film is a Stratford show. The audio is from Massey Hall. Two different shows put together in this really gorgeous sort of grimy uh, eight millimeter footage combined with the music is, is just quite stunning as he's clearly stunned out of his mind about presenting some of the greatest songs that have ever been written by him. Um, nonetheless, he, he's been sort of churning this stuff out as part of his archive, doing a really, really great job of giving fans what they want, particularly from this era. And his latest is called Shakespeare. And so here I am opening it from its frustration free packaging because that's how things work now. As I open it up, just so you can get a sense of the unboxing. Now this was available as a standalone vinyl release, a standalone CD release, or if you're an idiot like me, the deluxe version. So here we are, Neil Young Live, the earliest known film of Neil Young Live, a solo acoustic concert at the Shakespeare Theater in Stratford, Connecticut, as opposed to Stratford, Ontario, um, uh, January 21st, 1971. Visit the deluxe edition LP and CD and DVD. Visit Neil Young Archives for high res audio and more. So here we are, Young Shakespeare. So this is, hypothetically, almost the same set as Massey Hall, just with slight variations. And again, how he sort of uh, gets that all to play, um, we will see. I'm gonna open this up. It'd be awesome if I'm totally confused that the Stratford production is this one and that this film is the same film that Massey Hall is except this has the audio that was actually recorded. I don't think that's the case, but I've been wrong before. Somebody can let me know in the comments or I can let myself know in the comments once I finally watch it. But nonetheless, here we go, opening up the Neil Young box. On the back, lovely picture of Mr. Young. Tell me why, old man, the needle and damage done, Ohio. Dance, 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 the CSNY song, Ohio. Uh, girl, uh, Cowgirl in the Sand, a man needs a maid slash heart of gold medley. Side two, journey through the past. Don't let me, don't let it bring you down. Helpless down by the river and Sugar Mountain. Um, 
that's what we got. That's not a bad set list. If I say Neil with his guitar, as I open it up inside the box, we have, as expected, the vinyl. And so this is the beautiful gatefold, nice sort of uh, um, a dull gloss on it. And then the record itself, because it's Neil, is going to be appropriately, oh, it smells, that's some good squishy. Um, and it's on its original uh, Reprise style label. And it's in one of these paper on the outside, plastic on the inside. And right out of the box, how's it look? No fingerprints. Yeah, it looks okay. It's still going to go through the degrader. But nonetheless, there's the vinyl version of this record. And then it also includes two discs. So one of the discs is, of course, the CD version of the exact same production, just in case I want to play it in my car, I guess, and not on Spotify. I don't know why I would do that. And yeah, uh, directed by Bernard Shakey, who of course is Neil Young himself. Um, and, and here we have on DVD um, the, the film version of this recording. So that in one set, I have the ability to own the movie version and the record in vinyl form and the CD if and when I want to actually listen to it on the CD. More Neil Young stuff to add to the collection, what can I say? I really love this era of him. It took me many years to actually get into this and sort of get past, I don't know, something about being a Canadian. There's a particular kind of Neil Young fan that I wasn't a huge fan of, to put it mildly. Um, and by the time we got to the sort of 80s, the Rock and the Free World stuff, it's just, it wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea, for lack of a better word. It took me a long time to sort of go backwards. Same thing with Dylan. Um, it wasn't until many decades uh, into my listening that um, uh, somebody like Dylan uh, I could really respond to. There was something about the nasalness of the voice or something about the way that he presented um, that, it, uh, that I wasn't getting past the hits, for lack of a better word. Um, somebody like Paul Simon I would dive into almost immediately. That something like Graceland just opened up my ears to everything that Simon and Garfunkel and Paul Simon did. Whereas it took me a while to get sort of into Neil. I'm by no means a lunatic the way that many people are, but nonetheless there's so much here to really love. Um, particularly in this era, just beautiful, incredible craft and beautiful songwriting. So there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the celebration of young Shakespeare from the old man himself, Neil Young. Um, please subscribe. Please ring the bell for future videos. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, go listen to a bunch of music and we'll see you next video. Take care.